the floor uh, is yours. Perfect. Okay, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is share some links in the chat. So while you hear me rambling about the application, you can actually uh, look at something. Something's uh, live. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Screen and I hope everybody can see it at the moment. If there are any issues, please uh, let me know. So, um, first of all, this is how the uh, presentation is going to go. I'm gonna answer all these questions. Uh, I'm a big fan of short and effective presentations. So maybe I'll have also some time to show some Real code concerning this application. Um, uh, you're, you're not sharing your screen. Yes. Ooh, yes. Uh, what am I sharing? Let's see. My apologies. It is the first time I am uh, presenting with Zoom. Um, this is wrong, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Also, the presentation. There you go. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Uh, but now you see the notes, I suppose. Yes, the notes. <laughs> yeah, you have to switch. Um, can anybody help me on this? Uh, I, I think you have to go to display settings. OK. On your notes. Uh, wait, let's try this again. This is the screen and here we are, correct? Yes. Yeah, great success, okay. So as I was saying, this is how it's gonna go. I'm gonna answer all these questions and uh, then if there is time, uh, I'm going to show off uh, a live demo and uh, possibly some code. Um, in the presentation itself, there will be very little code. It will be a generic uh, overview and uh, from a coding point of view uh, that will come up uh, later. Uh, so first of all, who am I? My name is Giulio Menna. I'm uh, an Italian living in the Netherlands and I am a developer and application manager at Leiden University Libraries. Um, I have two tasks. Uh, my first task as a developer is obviously to come up, develop and improve new applications. But I'm also tasked with maintaining uh, legacy code. And I am also an application manager, which means that I make, have to make sure that all my uh, systems are always uh, reachable and working at all time. Some of my systems might include, for example, Primo or uh, Easy Proxy, for example. Um, I'm not the only developer at Leiden University Libraries. We are actually 11, uh, 11 colleagues that, uh, among many other tasks, also uh, constantly uh, develop new things. We have a very active uh, GitHub page in which we try to share uh, as much code as possible. Our guideline is that if we develop something for the library, the final objective should be to uh, have it uh, released under uh, open source, as open source code. Um, a couple of highlights of what we made so far, we created uh, a plugin for browsers, which I presented in at Igaloo in 2018, the library search plugin that now has around 2,500 active users at Leiden University. We are big users of Islandora and uh, two of my colleagues are very active in creating uh, plugins for the system, uh, such as this Islandora metadata synchronization, which works between Alma and Islandora. So if your library also uses these systems, uh, strongly advise you go and give a look at what we have made. And we created also a status monitor for um, our applications. Uh, as I mentioned, I am an application manager. 
if my applications go down, I need to be aware of it. And this application we made uh, does exactly that. It sends a message uh, through email and to our Microsoft uh, Teams, informing us that a system is no longer available. And the code is open source for other libraries who might be uh, interested in it. But what are we going to talk today about today? Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Alma Primo Locate tool, which is, in very simple words, a web application that uses the Alma API and Alma to display a button in Primo. This button links to pages that help patterns find uh, objects in our uh, library buildings and rooms. If you have ever looked at the Alma uh, documentation and you have come across the configuring uh, the configuring the template for the location map link, it is exactly that, but on steroids, you can do a little bit more. This is what it looks like. On the left, uh, you can see our catalog and I have highlighted uh, the button that a user will find whenever there is an activated uh, library. And on the right, uh, you can see the uh, endpoint of the application, what the user will see once he or she has uh, clicked on that button. Well, why do I say that it's uh, an application on steroids? Well, we have baked a lot of features into this uh, application. We have created an admin panel for my colleagues to fill in the various building descriptions, the various location descriptions, alerts that might be useful for users. We have added the possibility to embed Google Maps to show where the buildings are. We have the possibility to add um, Alma opening hours through the API. We can upload maps of locations. And we have added uh, the possibility to, uh, of receiving notification in case there are errors in our application. As I mentioned, I'm an application manager. I need to know uh, these things. So we get an alert via email or Microsoft Teams that uh, errors are being displayed to our users so that we can quickly take action. Why did we create this uh, application? Well, uh, our library is mostly uh, composed of closed stacks. So books uh, are requested via the Primo interface and they are delivered to our users directly. The users don't have to go uh, and pick up uh, books by themselves. But we do have some open stacks. For example, here I'm mentioning the uh, reference material in our special collections reading room. But that's a bit of a problem because imagine uh, a new student joins the university and finds a book that is in the open stacks. At the moment, uh, Leiden University Libraries lacks a good way to uh, inform the user about where the book is if it can be brought home, in which bu building it is, if the building is open at that time, all this kind of information is uh, lacking at the moment. And that resulted often in students choosing not to go and see these books because it's much easier to just find something similar either available online or that can be requested and brought to the uh, user directly. So we needed something that would improve the situation and facilitate the use of uh, our open stacks. The problem is we are not uh, the greatest developers in the world, but we make solid applications. So we wanted to create something that would have been solid, uh, usable, while we wait for uh, a commercial solution that fits our needs. I know that uh, Ex Libris is developing something. There will be a presentation about uh, a similar application in the uh, following days. So we will be keeping an eye on that. But in the meanwhile, 
uh, we had to come up with something. So we started working. Uh, when did we make it? Uh, well, we made it at the worst possible time. Um, we made it in 2020 when, uh, well, the Netherlands went into a lockdown during, to, during uh, the pandemic. Uh, this instantly made uh, the application, uh, well, not redundant, but uh, well, useless for a time because of course, all our locations were um, not accessible anymore. They were off limits for, for everyone. On the bright side, that gave us uh, a little bit more time to develop, to take it easy. Uh, we had less pressure to deliver uh, a working application and a lot of more time to test and collect feedback about how our uh, application was uh, behaving. Uh, where can you see it in, in action? As I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of uh, live demos. I'm horrified about the idea of it going horribly wrong, but uh, I share these links in the chat. Please feel free to go in, uh, and give a look. You can see a live example and the endpoint, what our application produces. And uh, we have uh, a lot of documentation uh, available. And uh, of course, we have our GitHub where you can have uh, download the code and experiment uh, by yourself. Now, um, starting to get towards the more technical part of the presentation, how did we create this um, application? Well, we used uh, Laravel, which is uh, a PHP uh, framework, which in our case, it takes care of the front end, the back end, the application logic, the connection to the database. We are obviously using the AMA API, which contains the library codes, the location codes, the location names. Uh, and uh, Alma itself, we use it to switch on or switch off um, where we want the uh, locate button to uh, appear. For the managers out there, this might be useful uh, or interesting uh, information, I, ho I hope. Um, how much did it cost us to create such um, an application and if there were um, any direct costs. Um, well, this this varies a lot. Um, I had experience with Laravel before. So as I mentioned here, creating a skeleton application, uh, proof of concept uh, took one working day. I had to connect to the Alma API, which was easy and put information in a database which for me was easy because I had experience with, uh, with this framework specifically. Uh, much more complex was getting it just right. Um, I mentioned here 100 hours, um, and this is due to all the small steps that um, we had to take as a team to make sure that the application uh, represented uh, the wishes of the stakeholders. So there was researching, planning, setting up the workflows, the sprint meetings that we had, the reviews, and all those uh, small steps that are required next to the actual uh, development and writing of the application code. Uh, of course, um, in my case, I am the developer and my task is to uh, write the application. I mentioned here 100 hours, but this does not include the time that my colleagues needed to uh, fill in uh, the data in the application itself once it was ready. Leiden University has uh, many locations and we wanted to describe as many as possible. And that was the tasks of my colleagues, not me as a developer. So that is not counted here in the uh, 100 hours. Um, there were no additional costs. We didn't need um, to buy specific software to make this. We didn't need, uh, uh, yeah, all the software that we used was just um, 
available for free, open source software, Visual Studio Code, uh, all the things were quite uh, free. Now I'm gonna go a little bit on a uh, technical rant, which might be uh, more interesting for uh, the developers. So as I mentioned, we used uh, Laravel uh, 7 as a framework to create this. Um, which requires uh, at least PHP 7.2.5, but of course, uh, that's not the safest, securest version of 7 uh, of PHP. So I strongly recommend uh, starting at least at 7.3. Um, we are using uh, MySQL, but the proof of concept started with a simple SQL light. Once we approved the, the project, um, we wanted to transition from SQLite to MySQL because uh, first of all, internal organization uh, reasons and um, SQLite is a text file that can be lost at any moment. So we prefer to have um, uh, MySQL. Blade, is the templating engine, which comes directly with um, Laravel uh, and it creates the uh, user interface. Uh, we're using Bootstrap 4 because, um, well, it works. And um, again, uh, we don't have to make uh, applications which are extremely beautiful, but they have to work. So there's no need for us at the moment to use more complex uh, front-end frameworks such as Tailwind, CSS, and all of those. Um, so we prefer to use uh, Bootstrap 4 and eventually update to Bootstrap 5. Um, and we are using a Font Awesome for um, the icons that, are, uh, that you can see around the uh, application. So, how does it actually work? Well, uh, maybe it's an idea to first of all, give a look at the URL that the application uh, uses because um, it explains a lot. Here you can see um, a URL, https finder.library.universitylyden.nl slash find slash bsz4. So the first part of the URL, the base URL, uh, finder.library.universitylyden uh, is basically where we are hosting uh, our application. In our case, um, the logic is we are part of Universitat Leiden, we are the library, and this is the application finder, but it can be anything. In our case, we chose a subdomain, but if you want to put this application on um, a whole domain by itself, that's obviously possible. Then we have the find part, and this is a root. And in the logic of the application, uh, it answers the question, what should this application do? What should the application do? The application should find something. What should it find? BSZ4. BSZ4 is the alma location ID, which is also a root, and it answers the questions, who, what? So the direct object. And if we mix these three parts up, we get a result, which is the application should find something about our special collections, rooms, and display the information to the user. Um, how do we determine which, um, uh, which locations should have the buttons displaying on our Primo environment? Well, um, again, this comes directly from the, um, the Alma documentation. So you go to Alma configuration, you create a new integration type, which is a discovery interface. You insert your template, including the location code, which is between um, curly brackets because it's a variable and uh, then you switch on or you switch off the application, the supported libraries, as you can see here in this image and the excluded uh, 
locations. This will display a button in Primo and the, uh, this Primo button has uh, locate as a standard. Um, sounds cool. Um, my colleagues didn't like it, so they uh, preferred to have a different label, a different text in that button. And of course, you can change this directly in the discovery interface labels in, uh, in Alma uh, itself. Uh, sorry, yes, yes, in Alma and the discovery interface labels. Now, this might, uh, this is the most complex part and the part with which my colleagues struggles the most. There are buildings, there are libraries, and there are locations. Leiden University Libraries has used um, Xlibris products from a long while. Um, we were on Aleph before switching to Alma and all our uh, Alma libraries uh, come from Aleph and they have grown organically. The problem is that um, my colleagues thought that the libraries were the same things as the buildings, but that is not the case. In our case, at, uh, at our main library building, we actually have two uh, libraries in the same building. So we have the Asian library and we have the main library. So I had to create a different entity called buildings. And in this building, in the, the buildings are not connected to the Alma API um, at all. Um, to the uh, buildings, you can then connect a location and not necessarily an Alma library because Alma libraries contain all the locations and we are interested in the locations and not in the libraries. Um, we could have taken this a little bit further and we could have chosen to display a map with the shelves saying this book is available on this um, shelf. The problem with that is that it's so much work to create and uh, books in a library tend to move. It's not maintainable. It takes way too much time, um, rather not. So shelves went out of our scope. Uh, this, uh, on the right, you can see what uh, an administrator of the application can see in the, uh, in the building section uh, of the app. As I mentioned, the buildings are not linked to Alma. You can personalize them as however you want. Um, you can create as many buildings as you want and they can be modified at any time. You can uh, describe the building, you can add the address, you can uh, add an additional link to, which is linked to more information. And the application will tell you, these are the Alma uh, location IDs that are connected to this building. Um, I mentioned that you can also add um, the Alma openings times uh, if needed. In our case, we did not because of course, uh, pandemic, Buildings are closed, information changes um, all the time. So we prefer to have a link in our case to um, the uh, opening times. Locations, this is the most interesting part. Uh, the, con the locations are directly connected to the Alma API. And uh, we get from the Alma API, the location name and the location ID. What you can't do in the application in the Alma Primo Locate tool is rename uh, the Alma locations. We're only using get. We're not, we not putting, we're not patching data to on Alma. This creates a bit of a problem because as I mentioned, we grew organically. We wrote uh, Alma location names that are not really representative or, or useful to the end user. So we added into the uh, application, the possibility to override locally the name of uh, the Alma location. As you can see here in this example, we have an Alma location name, which is methodology. 
my colleagues believe that it's not useful to uh, the end users. So they override it with social and behavioral sciences, uh, sciences uh, library collections. We can add a floor. In this case, this collection is on the ground floor and I believe there are no other rooms other than uh, the library. So the room name hasn't been added. Location map, well, we don't have good drawings of the locations. So in this case, it has not been uploaded. And uh, there's the possibility to add free text by my colleagues uh, to help the users uh, with the uh, finding their books in this location and how they are, in this case, how they are organized. And the fact that many of the books available at this location can be collected, uh, requested via the catalog and there's no need to go to the library directly. A uh, small thing, of course, um, two Alma locations ID cannot be inserted into the database because the theory is there's only one Alma location with one code. And uh, there's no need, uh, this prevents repeating, adding locations that have already been added to the database. Um, as I mentioned, we wrote this during the pandemic and uh, what we needed uh, was the possibility to inform uh, users that uh, things changed, that there was something going on. So my colleagues requested me to add an alert, um, for, uh, the possibility to add alerts in from the admin panel. So that's what I created. Uh, for example, uh, here we are using it now to uh, inform our users that uh, yeah, the library is um, encountering uh, uh, that the opening times have changed and that uh, there are specific routes that users have to walk to. Um, uh, such an alert, we have added it thanks to this uh, options. Uh, you can create multiple alerts and they can be disabled or enabled. No need to delete a whole uh, uh, alert uh, once it has uh, done its purpose. And multiple alerts can be available at the same time. The problem is if you add 20 alerts, then you get a block of text like this and the useful information for the user goes down uh, way at the bottom of the page. So I recommend using one to maximum two alerts at the same time. Um, of course, it's an application, it has to be secure. That's the highest priority for Leiden University. At the moment, uh, we're using LDAP login and we're going to switch to a single sign-on which allows us to add uh, two-step verification for administrators. Uh, we have recapture and throttling to prevent uh, uh, attacks on the login page which then leads to the admin panel, which is really a CRUD interface for uh, modifying the MySQL database. Side note, we're using MySQL. I mentioned SQLite, but Laravel allows you to use any database you might be uh, interested in or might use. Um, so we made this whole application. It was great, great experience. Uh, what did we learn? Uh, the most important learn lesson for myself was uh, how great it is to involve uh, directly the stakeholders, the people that are going to use this application once it's live. I am a developer. I, uh, I love developing. I, I always think I have the greatest ideas, but um, often it's not so. Um, extra pairs of eyes that look at what I'm doing uh, help me. Um, get out of my head, get out of my ideas. There are other necessities for the, for the people who actually are going to use this application. And the feedback from these people, from my colleagues was uh, incredibly useful. Um, where the buttons have to go, uh, the, something simple as we would like the columns in the applications to be sortable because uh, we're adding so many locations, we can't find them. We would like to overwrite the Alma uh, names. All these ideas came from my colleagues and that was extremely useful uh, for me. Um, 
what I found also extremely useful was declaring the roles and responsibilities. At the beginning of the project, I'm the developer, you're the stakeholders. The manager that we have to report to is this person. And these are the people we can consult in case we have uh, difficulties. And all of this information was essential to uh, that it would be placed in a central place. In our case, it was Microsoft Teams because that's what we started using um, at the beginning of the pandemic with remote working. And I must say, I was very satisfied with it. Everybody knew where the files were, where the links were. Um, if there were any questions, everything was found uh, on Microsoft Teams. Um, also the documentation. In this case, um, I, I realized how important it is to write the application. And of course, it, it's clear in my head how it works. Uh, but then when I show it to someone else, it might not be. So write the do documentation as I develop. If I make a controller, I explain what the controller does in its own file. And I place this file, the documentation and everything with the code. So if someone wants to develop, someone wants to branch, someone wants to adopt this uh, application, the documentation is right there and uh, it's easy to uh, to find to read and to use if you are if you have given a look at the links that i shared you will see that uh, you know, the documentation is easy to read and um, can guide the users in trying to implement this application in this uh, in their own library um Technically, this is my presentation. I think, um, how much time do I have? If any time at all? Um, still have uh, seven minutes. Oh, seven minutes, nice, yeah. okay. So we can, uh, we, can, we, can, we have a couple of questions. Uh, okay, yep. <coughs> uh, let me see. Um, shall I look at the Q and A's questions? The Q and A, uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to project them. Um, I don't know if. Okay. okay. So let's see. Um, I have on. Um, I can see the question. I can read it out loud. Yes, please. Okay. As there are commercial shelf map solutions out there, what was the key aspect that made you decide to develop it yourself instead of using a commercial solution? Well, um, mainly uh, the fact that um, the commercial solutions looked like to us as uh, using a cannon to kill a mouse. Um, as I mentioned, our library is mainly uh, closed stacks. We don't have that many um, uh, that many open stacks that we would really benefit from a, a deeply developed um, application. It's, uh, it would not justify the costs of uh, acquiring uh, such a solution. The applications that we built, again, um, I am a developer for Leiden University Library. I am paid by them, so um, it should be. Um, um, it made more business sense to develop it ourselves than to go um, uh, directly and um, acquire a license for a pre-built application. Uh, I hope this answers your question. And um, I don't know if everyone can see these questions. Um, um, I'll read it out loud. You said shells went out of scope. Could locations be split by shelf mark in addition to locations? Uh, if you add them to MySQL data, we have such big locations, we had need a mapping app which uses shelf runs. We had an in-house app uh, we are looking to develop a new app. We have big ideas to stop the UE. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. 
Um, yes, that's the benefit of um, working with uh, Laravel uh, and using the, the URL that I showed, which has find variable for the location. If you want to use the shells, uh, what you need to do in this application technically would be create a shelf mark controller and uh, a route that gets the location. Then from the location, you get the shelves and you select, select a shelf. And then you would have a URL that is, um, maybe it's easier if I just um, type it. Uh, if we go to our location, uh, let's see. I hope everyone can see this. Um, you have to share your screen again. Oh, I have to share it. Um, I, can do, I can do this. Uh, it's here. Yes. Share screen. Uh, screen two. Yes. Okay. Um, can you see the URL by any chance? I hope so. Yes. Okay. Um, well, you have the, in this case, the, the location, uh, the Alma location ID, and then you would have shelf mark, which would be the shelf mark coming from the Alma API. That is possible. And then you present this um, same page, but um, you can add, uh, uh, you can add the, the, the location details here with the map if you want. So it is possible. And if you want to know how to do it, please do contact me. I'm very happy to, to help. Um, I see another question. I hope we have time. Do we have time? We have still three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Can you get around restriction of two locations with the same code by prefixing with the library code. Um, this becomes more of a, a philosophical question. Do you really want that? Shouldn't the Alma IDs be unique? Um, all, all I have to do in the code to um, do this, to answer this question would be, in the location, in the uh, uh, location controllers, location controller. Um, so we go through a check and we say that the location in this row has to be unique. We can remove that control and say that, that that's no longer necessary. Um, and then uh, simply um, add, yes, as you say in your case, um, add a prefix to the library code. That is certainly possible, but um, personally, I wouldn't advise it. I would prefer that the Alma locations ID be unique. But um, yes, it is certainly possible. Okay. There is uh, one last question uh, from Magali Borgia, and she says, um, or she asks, can your application uh, be easily adopted to an open source map like OpenStreetMaps? Yes, yes. Um, all I do to embed the, the, the the Google Maps, in our case, is just uh, the, the, the administrator has to copy paste the embed code from Google Maps. That's it. So if uh, OpenStreetMap has an embed code, you copy pasted it into in, when you are creating a, a building and it will display. So yes, it, it can, but it's possible, very easy. And uh, I should add it to the documentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if there are still questions, you can uh, email uh, Coolio directly.